My father talks about this one night, and I just think about how scary, and people, you know, there, there's a number, I think, of veterans and folks who've been in the military here, but the, 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 in the middle of the fight, my father was surrounded one night, and he said there was so much Nazi tracer fire coming at them that it looked like daytime, and they were just taking bullets left and right. And my father's unit, the commander kept coming over and saying, keep fighting, keep fighting, men are escaping. And my father's thinking, nobody's escaping tonight. We're dying for our country tonight. This is it. And, you know, you know, we're surrounded, totally, totally surrounded by tracer fire. And at this point, my father said they were almost basically down to bayonets and hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were so short of weapons and, and guns, and they weren't getting reinforcements, of course. And the, and the Americans were sending down some parachutes with some weapons, but very few. And the Russians were sending down the wrong bullets and everything, you know, and barely sending down anything. So they were left to, to slaughter. And then his commander said, keep fighting, keep fighting. More people are escaping. My father just thought it was like a fantasy. And then they said, it's your turn. And it was my father was one of the last men out. And I've come to learn in Polish history that, that these guys who actually did this escape are very much considered heroes. So my father said, where are we going? You know, and there's nowhere above ground. We don't have, first of all, any aircraft. There's nowhere around us. And they said the only place to go is below ground. And so he escaped through the sewers. And can you imagine how scary that must have been? But at that point, it was march or die, is what they said. That's, this is it. So the sewers, and I've come to learn, we, we went through sort of a sewer to see what it was like. And the sewers are so dark, it's like this dark maze. And if you, you have to hold on to the person in front of you, basically for your dear life, because if you take a wrong turn and you're the, one of the guys in the back, you're doomed. And so my father was holding on to this guy in front of him for dear life. And the guy in front of him had a machine gun, and the cone of the machine gun kept hitting it up against my father's head. So much so that when he finally got out of the sewers, and they were, you know, you can imagine the smell, and they were seeing dead bodies floating by them and everything else, you can imagine what was in the sewers and nowhere, you know, and the Nazis were finding out about it and throwing down, you know, hand grenades and flooding them out and gassing them out. And so my father finally made it to the safety and was coming up. Everybody said, oh my gosh, what happened to you? And he was drenched in blood. And he didn't realize the cone of the machine gun had, was cutting into his head so much that wow. to this day he still has a scar. Wow. And when we went back to Poland, I played Rita the journalist and did the digging and the investigating. And, and, and I was saying before about my father's memory, it was amazing because Dates that a first Polish document showed, well, maybe he was a day or two off. He's like, no, no, I remember that date. Turned out he was right. That when we went, they got the official archives, my father had like an amazing memory. Wow. And, you know, they had so much stuff. And the Polish government was supplementing us. And the German government, everybody was helping us. It was, it's been an incredible effort. And when we went back, we found the guy who was actually alive, who was in front of him in the sewer with the machine gun. <laughs> and can you imagine what that reunion was like? It was, it was incredible. Wow. Now, you stopped traffic in downtown Warsaw. <laughs> I did. This was a great moment. We said, we got to go back and find the sewer that you escaped in. And now there's this huge monument, which we have a picture in the mm -hmm. book, which is, I thought was so beautiful to see this huge monument. And when the president, now the late president, unfortunately, let Kaczynski, found out that my father was one of the sewer guys, the guys who escaped through the sewers. They said, your father's one of the few heroes. We don't have many of them alive, needless to say. A lot of them, you know, didn't make it through the sewers, or a lot of them died soon after. And so we went there, and I said, where's the, where's the actual entrance to the sewer? And it was in the middle of downtown Warsaw, in the middle of Old Town. It was almost as if, you know, you're in the middle of, you know, Reston or even D.C., basically. And it was such a busy, busy intersection. But you could see these little yellow bricks leading up to it and this small opening. And my dad said, I was a lot skinnier then. <laughs> you know, I was able to get through it. And so we, I said, Dad, we got it. You have to walk up. He said, I want to see the entrance. And this was one of the most beautiful moments, you know, to see this. We, it was a couple of us who were filming a documentary at the time because we wanted to capture these moments. And we stopped traffic in all these different directions. Can you imagine like one of the busiest intersections in like Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. or New York or anywhere in the country? We stopped traffic and my dad walked up and not a single car honked. And you could see tears rolling down the eyes of drivers and they were saluting my dad or giving thumbs up because they knew that it was an old fighter going back to his escape route. It was so beautiful. It was just he, a magical moment. He may indeed be a quiet hero, but he is a national hero of sorts in <laughs> Poland, is he not? Now he's become one. And in fact, wow. you know, it was neat. The president, um, his father and my father were actually in the same unit. 
and which was for a brief period of time. So it was wonderful. The president was asking my father, you know, tell me what it was like, telling me about how bad the weapons were and how we're. So it was an amazing moment. And for my father, who literally left, you know, Warsaw was an inferno. And last time he stepped foot in Warsaw was in October 1944. It was leveled. My father left with a shirt on his back. He was barely alive and shoved onto a rail car at that point to a POW camp. And for me and him to go back, and I held his hand as he and his hands were sweaty. It was like a little kid. And we went back together. And for him to get a hero's welcome was just an amazing, amazing moment for me.